Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Joel and I'm from Black Panda Studios. Today I'll be doing my first development vlog for the game I've been making, um, Ice Cream Tycoon. Um, yeah, it's been doing well so far. Haven't run into any major issues yet, but... Quick update as well, I've just hit, like, it's not much, but like, I've hit a thousand views on my time-lapse. That little 40-hour game programming time-lapse that I made. It's, uh, pretty old and it's a lot of, um... I don't know. The way I handled some things, I can do a lot better now, and... Yeah. I don't know. The next, this game's a lot better, as it's not done in 48 hours. This is all... This is a lot... A lot of messy code in this game, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to make. I'm just gonna thank you for that. Um... Right on. Oop. Okay. Yeah, so... Basically, um... It's a game about selling ice cream, and customers walk up and have a chance of stopping at your store and they drop money or they give you money and you gain popularity and the more popularity you have means the more customers you get the more money you make and in turn you like your goal is to be as rich as you can become the tycoon of the industry um this is the little messy class that i've got this is just for the main menu um i just developer commands to skip to different screens so if i click play i get an error because i've done something spastic but, um, oh, what am I doing? Okay. Inconsistent. You're inconsistent. Ah, oh, fix that later. I'm just going to delete that class altogether. Ta-da! Alright, um... So, yeah, I'm just going to run you through what's happening so far. So, you got my little splash screen that I... Stolen image and got some bamboo text or whatever. <laughs> Fades into a loading screen. I'm going to work on that next so it actually works. It's just a fake loading screen right now, but yeah. Let's skip to the menu. Okay, so what we've got here is play, options, credits, quit. All works, goes to different screens, but I don't know if I can get back. Yeah, I'm stuck if I go to that screen. They're just empty screens right now. Um, I'll just skip to the menu, click play. Jeez, I'll turn it down. Alright, so... <laughs> my art is just... My art is real. Um, that was done in like five seconds, so I hope you don't think that's a real serious attempt. Um, at the moment, you tap it and you get money. That's not... Probably not going to be in the game. It's just to test some things. Also, you can see the estimated daily customers here is six. Um, and I've got a popularity of ten, say I increase the temperature. The estimated daily customers go up. Um, the temperature doesn't affect the customers as much. So say you have a really cold day, 20 degrees, you get four customers. It seems pretty accurate, right? What I need to fix though is when you start getting to a temperature like 40 degrees, um, <laughs> it, daily customers go down. The max temperature you're able to hit in the game is probably about 38 degrees anyway. So I'm going to cap that and have a range of temperatures. Also, I'm going to have some seasons. Um, so, for each season, they'll have a certain range of temperatures that will be randomly chosen for the day. Um, I'll show you, to work out the customer flow, it's just the temperature divided by 6 and the popularity divided by 9. And the math behind that really is just, it, was a, it returned the most uh, accurate number, really. So Also, um, I've got... Go to HUD. A few little static uh, variables just to mess around with for now. Like these. There's never going to be more than one temperature for the day. There's never going to be more than one instant, um, instance of money. Same popularity. So I could make them static. But eventually this is just not going to be a thing. And I'm going to incorporate them into their own classes. And a lot of different variables that they can be changed from. So say I change my popularity. So you'll start at 10. And the first temperature for the... And probably start at like 32 degrees. And that's five customers. It seems pretty accurate when you're just starting out for the day. Um, what I'm thinking of doing also is having the money automatically going up as well. As well as customers that walk up to your stand. So maybe have uh, sort of like, I don't know, cookie clicker is an example how you buy things and your money constantly goes up at a certain speed. Thinking of incorporating something like that into it. So say you buy like a uh, stand, like another stand elsewhere that you're not managing. It, it has a constant flow of um, 
revenue that will come in from that stand. So, yeah, I'm going to do something like that. Just go through a few classes with you. This is just a class I threw together in three seconds. I haven't done anything with that yet. It's probably going to change a lot. Um, <coughs> so, this is my main menu class. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Setting the position for the text. Um, that's just changing the color and saying if you click it, change to a certain screen. Uh, this is drawing everything, and that just means if I press S, switch to splash. The game state manager is what handles my switching of screens, so I'll get rid of all these summaries. Loading content, unloading content, updating, and okay. So. Basically, we've got our um, load, unload, update, and draw, and we've got oh, also in our drawer as well. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we're just checking it. So if you are on a screen, so it's just like a logic check. If for some reason you're not on a screen, which I don't see happening, but it's just to make sure, then draw the screen. In here, we've just got um, some static void um, functions that simply. I'll show you. So switch to splash just sets the current game state to equal the splash screen. So the menu screen, play screen, option screen, control screen, etc. etc. Um, yeah, so whenever I have a new screen, create a public static void, switch to whatever the screen name is, and just create a class for it. I got a little naming convention for all my screens. I've got splash screen, sound, play, pause, options, menu, and controls also got a little rectangle helper class um, I just put this in here but I'm not sure if I will need it because at the moment I'm just using X and Y vector math sort of thing like if the mouse is less than this position and greater than this one and etc all that sort of stuff um, the game ones pretty straightforward I've got some static things like exit game music SFX screen height and width so I can grab them from everywhere because I'm never going to be changing that in this game it's just going to be a set screen to a thousand by six hundred also I'm setting the mouse visible to true and then for load content load the content set the services to services and switch to splash so that's just setting the starting screen really just saying game set manager unload content update and draw so yeah pretty simple the reason I don't have a begin and end as well is because Pretty sure in my game state manager I had it. Or oh no, don't worry. Um, in each individual screen I have a begin and end rather than just um having everything being drawn in a begin and end in the draw. So that way you're not just drawing everything at the same time. You're only drawing the things for that class. Uh, yeah. So what I'm working on is just. My goal now is to simply get get this number and have an animated customer walk to the stand, pause, or walk back from either side, have a 50-50 chance of coming from either side. They also need to have a, be spaced out from each other. So say the estimated daily customers is six. Um, I might, I might, um, the difference between how fast they come or like the space time between each customer I think I'm going to go like divide the daily customers by 60, which is 60 seconds. So say you got six customers, it will be a customer like every 10 seconds. But say you get an estimated daily customers of like 70, that's when, if you get a, no, estimated daily customers over 60, 60 divided by 60 is obviously one. So you get like a customer every one second, it's going to have a message to come up and say, um, you're getting quite popular, would you like to expand your business? You get a bigger stand. Um, you can do some upgrades and you also unlock a new location so that it splits your customers between the two locations and etc. So as you get more popular, you unlock more locations to go to. So yeah. Um, so say you have an estimated daily customer of 60. That means you get a customer every second, which would just look ridiculous and the screen would get too filled up. And I might even make it smaller than 60 to be honest, but... We'll see how it goes in terms of like performance and that, but yeah, I'm just doing these development logs because they're a bit of fun. This little button's pretty fun to play with. Zero. 
If it is minus five degrees, you will get one customer. I need to fix that as well. You're never going to go below about 12 degrees, maybe 15, 16. And that'll be in like autumn or something. I might not even have winter as a thing, but I might have like scenery change based on the season. But that's all later. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some really really bad artwork and just get gameplay going because I figured that I, if I can't do art, I might focus on the programming side of things first and have a fun gameplay. And then when it comes down to like the last two, three months, just work on polishing all the artwork, making it fit in where it can. Because if I try and make all the artwork now that's really good, it'd be great, but I'd waste too much time trying to fit it all in. So I'll do that last and just have some little placeholder art in here. Um, what else? What else can I show you? Um, yeah, I'm, I also need to add in a shop button, or depending on how I do the heads-up display, I might have like a little window, oh no, a little window, a little um, heads-up display overlay bit here that has like a shop button, or just cuts the screen off down here, and just has some things that you can do, like categories at the top, and if you click them it changes what's in here, and then all that, like a little class just for this little bit here. Also, this is not what the HUD's going to look like. That's just to help me. I've also got the console here just to show the X and Y coordinates of my mouse. Minus 1,900. So, yeah, it's because i got two monitors going. Um, close out of that. I think I'll help with game state. Game state's a really, really easy class. Okay. It's just that. Game state manages a bit more complex, but you don't... You don't really need to understand it to use it, like it's hard to explain. I understand like the core concept behind it, like Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty good, I like it. Um the HUD, got the season the menu, the play. Oh it's going down in the play, so got the background music, loading in the things. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Setting up a few things. I'm also just going to create a start working on functions in each screen that just resets things if you need to as well because if you leave that to the last minute you have to go through and find everything that has to be reset and it'll turn out that you don't have a variable for one thing and then you'll have to make one and it's just time consuming so I'm going to create like a private void reset stats or something. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's hovering over a button. I know you could do it with rectangles, but I don't know. This way is just funner. It's more accurate as well. You can have heaps of... You could nearly make it per pixel like this, but it would probably go down like this many lines. Which, <laughs> that might just be silly. Um, well, that's just so it only clicks once you've released the button and not just when you're holding it in. Pretty straightforward. It's a little. Just take this down. What else? What else? Um, I'm going to be working a lot on gameplay, so anyone interested in testing the game, it could be really bad graphics, but well, bad, like, sprites, textures, and stuff. I might even steal a few walking sprite sheets just for, like, customers. I might have, like, there'll be a range of things. Like, there'll be, like, Sonic sprite sheet, and then, like, a I don't know. Any walking sprite sheet that you see in Google Images, that will be the range of customers that will come on when I'm developing it because I just can't animate. Um, yeah, once I got the gameplay going, I'm gonna put the link to download the ex executable file and get some people to test it and reviews. I'd love some people to just review the game and tell me what's shit. Like, tell me if it's bad. Tell me what I should do if I'm doing something that I could be doing better. I love feedback. It really helps. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little update. I'll be doing the next one once I have a little tiny bit of gameplay and something to do. This is just, this is the foundation. It's like, it's what I'm just going to build the game off. So, I finished the foundation. I'm going to be working on gameplay now. I'm going to be doing the tutorial as well. I haven't been able to do a tutorial. Like I probably could have, but I've been caught up in a lot of assignments, because apparently as soon as you get into year 12, they throw everything at you at once. 
but you know, I will be getting straight into the sprite tutorial because I got an early day today and it's raining, so I have nothing better to do. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe for updates. The updates will probably be like weekly updates and tutorials, quest tutorials, and I'll do them eventually. Thanks for watching.